my first time on a Sunday morning, and thank you very much for coming here bright eyed and uh, bushy tailed to listen to speakers uh, talk to you on a Sunday morning. Uh, I've got 15 minutes, and I'd like to actually uh, address questions you have around this topic, which is not, you know, the most intuitive thing one thinks of uh, chief outside officers. Uh, the four areas I would like to kind of talk about is why have a chief outside officer, what value do they bring, uh, what to look for when you're actually hiring someone uh, to be a chief outside officer, and what it takes to actually make it work, some pointers to make it work. I'm going to talk about this from the perspective of the lens and the hat that I've worn for 22 years, which is marketing and digital. Uh, I'm sure there's value that chief finance officers from the outside, HR officers, other people bring, but uh, the lens I'm going to bring is is what I wear, and why and what an outside chief outside officer in the areas of marketing and digital can do for for businesses, small and large. Why a chief outside officer? Why a chief marketing officer, chief digital officer from the outside? One, you can't afford a CMO on the inside full time because you're a young, growing business. And perhaps you're at a stage of your business where you don't need someone full time to be a chief marketing officer. So if you can do with a water pistol, why, you know, why pay for a rifle? Obviously, as complexities of businesses grow, uh, you know, they're uh, their needs grow from a marketing perspective. It becomes more and more imperative to kind of bring inside some of the some of the skill sets that you may not be able to bring in on the outside. Uh, the other thing is, you simply want an outside perspective. You have a person running marketing. You have people doing digital. You're a mid-sized, growing, large business. You want an outside view. You want expertise that uh, someone from the outside can bring. You want a viewpoint. That's another reason to look at it. What will a chief marketing officer, chief digital officer bring to a business? Well, very important, a consumer focus. And this is very, very uh, pertinent to particularly young businesses where they sort of behave inside out. I've spoken to a lot of young businesses. What business are you in? And they say, I am an app that does X, Y, Z, or I am in this segment. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's because the VC who's working with you has bucketed you in that segment in his portfolio. Uh, you're not actually in that segment. The consumer sees you somewhere else. So the first thing an outside marketing voice brings is the orientation of the consumer and what consumer need you're solving. Uh, very few businesses, at least the younger businesses, tend to see it that way. Mature businesses have learned over time, it's not about what they do, it's what consumers buy. You know, those of us who went to B school learned that people don't buy electric drill, they buy a, a hole, a four inch hole, right? Uh, very often you forget that. So that's one point you get. The other point, and I, that's wearing my digital hat, uh, it's very complicated. Digital channels, someone said you need to be on Instagram because you're a service business. Someone said you must be on Twitter, oh, but you must be on Facebook. And, uh, oh, but you must do Google search and we must put videos on YouTube. An outside voice, an outside counsel will help you orchestrate the pieces. There are more and more channels, there are more and more narrow spaces, uh, which are important. But you need to know how to make music. So much like Zubin Mehta plays an orchestra and you know doesn't play 84 instruments, but there are 84 musicians that he makes melodious music with, your chief digital officer on the outside will help the channels make music. Marketing channels, digital channels, consumer channels, the interplay. Another way to look at it is Lego blocks. The blocks are the blocks are the blocks. Every set of Lego Lego boxes has exactly the same set of blocks. The way you stack them up can make one, one structure, stack them up another way you can make another structure. The channels will stay the same, the channels will change. This person will help you 
make sense of the channels, will we'll, we'll, we'll make sense of the channels in the context of the consumer. Ten years ago, we were in Yahoo channels. Today, we are on WhatsApp. You know, so the, the propensity of consumers to share with each other hasn't gone away. The channels they're using have changed. This person helps you kind of not get caught up in the channel, but think beyond. The other thing is questions. People come to achieve outside office and give me answers. The one that really works for you is the one that question you a lot, make you think of what you're doing, make you question your assumptions, and along that journey, actually bring up solutions to your questions. So it's not about press a button, get an answer. It's about being able to question what you are and finding the answer. And then this person with the expertise is able to solution those answers into actually stuff that you do on the ground. The fourth value is neutrality. You can have a marketing manager internally, you can have very charged co-founders who kind of look at a business like their own child. You're not going to really criticize your own child. Your child is the most talented, the most beautiful, the bestest in every way. This person comes with a neutral view. He or she is on your side, but is still neutral. So there's this neutrality you can That's the value you can get from this person. So what kind of person should you look for? You, know, you need to look for someone who's at the intersection of consumers, brands, technology, and digital. I'm using digital and technology interchangeably, but it's important that you get somebody who knows the lay of the land and the play, not just yesterday, but today going forward. And you need someone at that intersection. You need someone with a width of experience, with a depth of experience. Whether you get somebody with uh, domain experience, I think that's optional because after a point when you've actually worked across sectors, worked across categories, domain expertise is probably already there with the teams that are doing it. You need an understanding of that domain, but you need like a pure clay domain expert? Perhaps not. If you can get that and you think it's more valuable than getting someone who's not from the domain, you know, that's the choice you kind of make. Now, a chief outside officer is different from a consultant. A lot of large brands, so we work with consultants, right? Isn't this a consultative role? How is this person different from being a consultant? Well, a consultant is usually tasked with a start-stop kind of a project. There is an outside view, there is an expert view, and a consultant leaves you with something and then goes on his or her way. A chief digital or a chief marketing officer who's partnering you from the outside is your partner. He's not your consultant. He partners you in your journey. He doesn't leave you with a PowerPoint deck, but actually helps you operationalize marketing digital towards your goals. So it's, 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 it's like almost you know, operationalizing it without being completely hands-on. It's hard to be hands-on if you're not working, uh, you know, full-time with the person. But it's, an, it's, it's a partner in your journey versus uh, tell me what's right or tell me what's wrong and be on your way kind of thing. Coming to what it takes to make it work. Okay. One, very, very important, you must be at a stage of your business where you're willing to make marketing investments. Not just to pay, pay the person you hire, obviously that's part of it, but to actually operationalize the stuff that you kind of advise. Because if you're not at a stage of your business where you're gonna make the marketing investments, then the advice would probably remain on PowerPoint, remain in conversations, uh, remain, you know, unexecuted, and then you start questioning the value because you paid for someone's effort or inputs, but not used them. What this person will also, of course, tell you uh, once you've engaged with with them is, what is it that you should invest in marketing? Because very often we kind of get caught up and we say, I've only got X to invest. 
or I have no money to invest. And I've worked with brands who spend 15 and 20 lakhs a month putting little flyers in newspapers and say they don't have a marketing budget. And I said, you know what, over the next three months, you're spending 20 lakhs a month putting flyers in newspapers, that's 60 lakhs. Now, if you spend 30 lakhs doing something different, you could actually have better outcomes. And they're like, oh, you found the button, you found the button. So you know, that's the value because sometimes you get caught up in not knowing uh, you know, what you're spending or, or just accounting it differently and uh, a person with the experience will find the money for you as well. We'll also counsel you sometimes and say if you should spend 20 lakhs and you can spend 10 lakhs, you will not get half the outcome with 10 lakhs, you will, it's a waste. You need that threshold. So hang on there till you spend 20. If you went to a conventional agency, they will take your 10 lakhs and spend it because you know you tasked them to spend it. You know, they, they're not tasked to tell you what you ought to do because while their partners and all agencies like to be considered partners, they finally come at your problem from answering what you want, which in many cases you don't know what you want because you know you're not the expert in that space. The other thing is they come at it from where they are. And that's very important again from a from a digital perspective particularly. You work with an agency that's done search primarily, the answer to every problem is more search. You work to an agency that does mobile app development, the answer to every business problem you have is a new mobile app. And uh, this orchestra player or this conductor that you bring in will actually help you kind of say, it's not the mobile app that you need to do, it's the customer touch point uh, you know, that you need to improve, or the service delivery, or the packaging that you actually send something across. The other very important thing to think of and to remember to make it work is that there is a time cost of learning on your own. A lot of young brands particularly, you know, come and say, mm, no, but we can figure it out. If you take six months figuring it out, then you, you, you know, your competition is doing stuff, your consumers are, are getting pissed off, and there's stuff happening there. Do you, do you want to wait to learn, you know, the hard way, or do you want to actually be prepared earlier? So that's something to think of, particularly if you're a young brand. The other thing to think of is very important, you're not paying time cost alone, you're paying expertise cost. Because when I work with young brands particularly, I'm told, but how much time are you going to spend giving me this solution? How much is an hour, a half day or two days of your time worth? The example I give them, so you go to a doctor and show him an x-ray. If he can tell you in 20 seconds what's wrong with you, that's because he's got 25 years of experience behind diagnosing or looking, reading x-rays. Is his counsel more valuable if he took seven days to tell you half the stuff? This is very, very important to look at and uh, it's something that comes up all the time. How many hours will give me what value? Uh, you know, to use a cricket analogy, you know, if, if, you, if you go to an expert and you ask Rahul Dravid what's wrong with someone playing a, a cover drive and he tells you intuitively that, you know, the head is not in line with the bat, that's because he's seen those shots being played two million times. You can go to Google and you can kind of try and self-diagnose it. Very dangerous. So, it's important to keep in mind that time cost, value cost is important. You must have the budgets to back what you're working with. You must look at these engagements as ongoing engagements in an ideal scenario. If they start stop, the value would, would be limited because the journey is kind of interrupted and you probably you know have, have someone else interpreting it later. So again, get into it when you have the budgets, when you have the ability to extract value and to actually run the journey with with the chief outside uh, officer. I don't like to call it agency-client relations because very often this person may be an individual uh, who will work with partners to actually deliver value. So it's not an agency you're hiring, it's a partner you're bringing on board to help you understand consumer insights, to help you understand the complex changing 
media space channels to help you find money, for you to make money, to address consumer problems so that you know your brand and business goals are met. That's it ladies and gentlemen and I'll welcome questions uh, from the audience.